And hello, welcome again. We'll continue where we last left off. So we are doing the Polhausen velocity profile. And of course, we can actually just put zero. Uh, I, was, I was saying uh, in the last video, d was equals to minus u infinity over 2 delta p q. Of course, if we want to use our 0 0.99 u infinity as a momentum thickness, we can put 0 0.99 here as well. Uh, it won't, won't, won't uh, be a problem. Okay, let's, let's figure out what d is. So what is D, uh, B, sorry, what is B? B is over here, so let's uh, substitute in here. B equals to minus 3D or 3 delta P square times D. So D is this thing here. All right, and very nicely uh, you will see Lots of things cancelled out. You see, lots of things cancelled out. Uh, B becomes uh, 3 over 2. 3 over 2. Okay. Uh, delta P. P. U. Infinity. Alright. So, what's the Paul Hausen velocity profile? Hausen velocity profile. Okay. U equals to okay, what's uh A and C are zero. So uh BY. BY is this whole thing here. BY BY plus DY. What's D? D is over here. So let, let's put a D in here as well dy cube okay we, we did a dy cube here dy cube all right so this is his original velocity profile okay so it's a cubic velocity profile if we wanted to include the 0 0.99 u infinity momentum thickness that's absolutely okay as well you just have to put a 0 0.99 to u infinity over here, then it'll be 0 0.99 times this whole thing. Hmm. All right. Okay, so uh, that's how we, I mean, it's just a factor of 0 0.99 if you want to do it like this. Um, yeah, but uh, I would say this, this is how it's done originally, okay? So now, now we need to substitute back in the substitute, substitute back in von Karman equation. Um, and where's this uh, von Karman equation? Yeah, we'll substitute it in here to find our shear stress. Okay, so there are a few things we need to substitute. It's not just u, not just u. Uh, but tau x as well also will be substituted. Okay, um, so let let's let's see what we can do. Um, okay, this this when you substitute in, it will be uh, pretty straightforward. You can just factorize your infinity out. Okay, but before we do that, we want to notice that uh, our you uh, our uh, free stream velocity doesn't change with x. That's a simplifying assumption. Okay, that's a simplifying assumption. And this whole first term will be uh, 0. Okay, under constant free stream velocity. Okay, uh, so con under constant free stream velocity, we will get this sort of uh, equation. Okay. So now you need to substitute these values of u in. Which, uh, yeah, let's let's do that. And uh, as you can see, it will get very messy very quickly. But don't worry, there are ways to deal with it. OK. 
Okay, so now now you see this this whole thing here. It's uh yeah, it, it's a little bit messy. Uh, yeah, pretty 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 messy. Okay, but just want you to notice one thing. Um y will not change okay y will uh the boundary layer thickness doesn't change with y okay note that delta p only changes with x not y so we can just treat this uh boundary layer thickness delta p as some constant and that's good news for us because uh that makes the integration a lot easier Okay, now, now uh, we have to deal with this mess of terms here. Uh, so let's go term by term. Okay, let's go term by term. Okay, this, this term uh, becomes, um, when you integrate this term here, okay, I'm going to separate things out. I will try to be fast, but I'll separate this uh, out first. Separate out the dy's. Okay, let me separate. Up. Let me take out the dy. First term here will become y squared over two. So it becomes uh, when you substitute in becomes delta p squared over two. So let's write that down. Okay. Delta p squared over two. Now, of course, uh, if you want, uh, if you want to substitute in your your zero point nine nine, it will it there will be a zero point nine nine here and a zero point nine nine here, and that will of course mess up all your numbers. But it is the same procedure. Okay, first thing is delta p squared over two. All right, this one will become delta p squared over f uh, delta p four over four, delta p four. To the power of 4 divided by 4. Okay, that's how integration goes. Okay, u infinity will just have a delta p in front of it. Delta p. Next term here, this y will become a y squared. So delta p squared over 2. And this one also, it's delta p 4 over 4. Delta P. Okay. Oh, I forgot the fraction. Fraction delta P to the power of 4 over 4. So that's that's uh, how we kind of end up. Now uh, we will need to combine a lot of things together. And we noticed, uh, wow, there's a lot of uh, multiplication. Okay. Okay. Either way, either way, there's going to be multiplication whether you want to do this by the product rule or otherwise. Not, uh, not uh, the most savory way of doing things, but okay, we we have to do that. Okay. Um. Of course, uh, there's one more thing that we need to note. This tau x here will also be replaced. Okay. Tau x here will also be replaced. All right. So, uh, but let's let's try multiplying things out first. I will get rid of this minus sign. I will get rid of this minus sign here. Okay, minus and minus will become a plus, and the other bit just becomes a minus. Now remove one of the brackets. Okay, so this bracket is uh, changed. I get rid of the minus sign. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll have to start multiplying in a lot of terms. So uh, let, let's try this first term first. So lots of copying and pasting. Okay, lots of copying and pasting. Um, so let's 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 do it this way. I'm gonna copy this bracketed term to each of these terms, and then um, we'll see how things go from there. Okay. 
Okay, so one, second one, two, third one, three. Okay. And as you can see, it's very, very long, but I'm going to deal with this one at a time. Okay, when you have u infinity, this becomes u infinity squared to both of these. So, uh, yeah, let's do it like so. I'm going to separate out the top and the bottom just to like make it a bit easier. Okay. Okay, let's multiply in. So u infinity will become u infinity squared for both. So I need to do it twice. U infinity squared and u infinity squared. So um that get rid gets rid of u infinity at the start. Next thing is I just raise delta p uh, to one more power inside and let's get rid of this I'm hoping a lot of things will cancel out later because <laughs> this, this does look like a nightmare to try and simplify okay though I must say that there is an easier way of doing this uh, yeah, there is a very much an easier way of doing all of this. Okay, um, that's using, if I'm not wrong, change of variables here. Okay, when you, when you notice this dy over here, okay, you notice dy, this dy over here, the, you notice this, the, the y cube and the delta p cube are all in the same power. Okay, y cube over delta p cube, y over delta p, y over delta p. Okay, so in a, in actual fact, we can actually um, we can actually uh, change the variables to make life easier for ourselves. So maybe this is not the most efficient way of doing things. Okay, okay, not very efficient. Okay, let let me let me change things. Yeah. So if you don't want to do this, uh, then let's do it this way. Yeah, let's do it this way. The more efficient method is like so okay you notice that uh, y over delta q or y over delta uh, is over here okay y over delta p y delta p all right Okay, what, what's next? Uh, this, this also becomes y over delta p cube. Yeah, so let's, let's do that. And that's how the textbook would have done it as well. And we can do the same for the rest of the rest of the things here. Ah, yes. So, after that, what do you do? We can factorize out u infinity so that uh, uh, make life easier for ourselves. And u infinity doesn't change with x, right? So, we can just factorize it out all the way. So the u infinity here will be factorized out. U infinity here will also be factorized out. So let's factorize out u infinity. Okay, so I'm going to disappear that u infinity. Disappear this u infinity. Disappear this u infinity. Okay, and that will be it. Okay. All right, now, now I hope you, you are able to see something, okay? Um, 
let's have this. Let's replace the integration variable by y over delta p. So uh, uh, we can do it like so. Uh, d y over delta p. Okay, so this becomes our integration variable. All right. So how 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 are we supposed to deal with this uh, integration variable? Um, so uh, this will be. Yeah, we have to use chain rule, right? So it is equal to. Oh, it's a bit difficult to see. Yeah. Let me. Uh, okay. Change integration variable. To this. And use chain rule. Okay. Fraction dy dx equals to fraction dy du fraction du dx. Okay. Um now of course uh, if we don't we just want a dy down there. We'll have something like that, and then we'll get rid of the x. Okay, so dy equals to dy du then times du. So what is dy du? Okay, u equals to this y over delta p, right? Okay, u equals to fraction y over delta p. Okay, delta p is a constant with respect to y, so it should be quite easy. So d, yeah, du equals to du equals to uh, one over delta p dy. Okay, and then dy equals to, alright, now should be okay, delta p du equals to dy. Okay, so this one is uh, pretty simple. Oh my goodness, this is so simple. I, I, I should have uh, used a more, uh, yeah, I, I should not have gone through the chain rule. But yeah, it's, it's uh, kind of a uh, little bit. <laughs> okay, never mind. Let's change the integration variable. I'll just uh, not comment too much. Let's change the integration variable. Uh, fraction d by. Uh, what's the integration variable? Uh, y over delta p. And then, of course, we'll bring the delta p out. Delta p, and then basically we can uh, sort of uh, use Wolfram for this, okay? So y over delta p is uh, the new integration variable. Um, new equals to f okay. Let, let me u equals to fraction y over delta p. Alright, and then we can just uh, hop this over to Wolfram very quickly. And one more thing, we need to change these uh, limits as well. So at y equals to delta p, uh, this whole thing will equal to 1. So you can see that this uh, integration is pretty simple. Integral is pretty simple. Uh, so we don't have to struggle through all of the other math, which is going to give lots of headache and lots of potential for careless mistakes. Okay. Alright, so let's do this and quickly integrate on Wolfram. Okay, uh, we'll change everything to x or uh, we'll use u. We'll use u because it's a lot easier to see. 
So you then we can just key this into Wolfram, no problem. I'm not going to go through all of that uh, all of that uh, what do you call that? Not gonna go through all the tediousness. Okay. So okay, uh, all these terms on the left are the same integral three over two u half u cube. Uh, minus okay, I think a one is missing. Yeah, I think a one is missing here. So let us put back the one. Let's put back the one here. And the one at the bottom as well. And we are almost done. We should have uh, another bracket here. And this one over here. Okay, let, 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 let's key things into Wolfram and let Wolfram do its job. Uh, <laughs> integrate. Integrate what? Uh, uh, 1.5. 1 1.5x minus 0.5x cubed. And 1 minus 1.5x. Okay, 1 minus 1.5x minus 0 0.5 x cube from x equals 0 to x equals 1 okay Wolfram do your thing okay uh, did I mess up some signs ah okay I did this one is not supposed to be a minus I think oh shoot yeah this minus minus is supposed to be a plus alright uh, great yeah, another careless mistake. So um, let's go up to the more efficient method part. Let's change this to a plus. But otherwise, uh, everything else should remain the same. Ah yes, okay. No, I, okay. That wasn't careless mistake. I the careless mistake was over there. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, the one was missing. Yes. Uh, let's. Uh, okay. So this sh this thing should be a plus here. Sorry, my bad. My bad. This thing should be a plus. So let's do a plus. And yeah, again, let's move frame do its job. And we'll have this uh, thing 0 0.139286. Okay. Of course, there's an exact number which I'm not going to calculate. Okay, tau over rho equals to. No, no, good thing is this whole integral disappears into a constant 0 0.139286. 0 0.139. 286. Alright. Okay. Um, the exact number, I mean, in the textbook, it will be. Exact number will be uh, 39 over 280. Based on the textbook I give. 139286, yeah. Same, same idea. Okay, from textbook. Okay, which textbook? Uh, uh this uh, heat and mass transfer, uh, textbook, and the exact number is. Okay. Tw thirty nine over two eighty, which will give you the same number. So this is a textbook answer. Okay, so um, that's it. Uh, at least for the integral. That's the messiest part. Uh, then you now have an expression for shear stress. Okay, but what is shear stress? Okay, shear, uh, we need to substitute in the shear stress. Okay, I think I'm running over time. Yeah, but uh, uh, we need to uh, substitute in the shear stress. 
substitute in shear stress as what? Okay, tau x equals to rho nu du uh, dy. Okay, so once again, the idea is that you substitute the same velocity profile. Okay, you substitute the same velocity profile into this uh, into this differential here, and then um, you cancel out some terms, and and we see what actually comes out. You should have a Reynolds number from there later on. Uh, but for now, I'll stop. I'll call it like a day for this video anyway. So I'll see you guys again. Bye bye.